Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I am so glad that you could join me for this home worship video resource. Let me take a brief moment and just give you an update on where I am and what the ministry is doing. I am currently in South Florida and I have hosted two Shabbat water immersion gatherings. After the first gathering, I water immersed 10 people. And a few days after the second gathering, I water immersed another person. And then a family drove all the way from Pennsylvania to South Florida to meet with me. And I met with them in the park and we studied the Bible. And then I took them over to the Atlantic Ocean and I water immersed two more people. And I wanna ask you to continue to pray. It's because you're laboring with us in prayer that we are being successful in the mission that Yah has given us. Now, if you live in South Florida, and would like to attend the gathering or be water immersed, then send me an email at info at triumphandtruth.global and I'll get right back with you and we'll see what we can do to connect, to be able to get together and allow me to teach you the word of Yah and then water immerse you. So we'll be looking forward to those emails. All right, it's time to blast our shofar. You may wanna press pause and go get your shofar. And when we come back in the next segment, we will sound the alarm to Teshuvah together. Hallelujah. We always love quoting the Shema as we begin our gathering, so we'll place the verses right up on your screen. We're going to begin with Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4, and like every week, let's say it with real enthusiasm. Hear, O Israel, Yah our Elohim, Yah is one, Echad. And you shall love Yah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being and with all your might. And then we go to the second Shema found in Torah, which is Deuteronomy chapter 18. Beginning with verse 18, let's say it together. I shall raise up for them a prophet like you out of the midst of their brothers, and I shall put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be the man who does not listen to my words which he speaks in my name, I require it of him. And then we go to Ezekiel chapter 36, beginning with verse 25, let's say it together. And I shall sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols, I cleanse you. And I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I shall take the heart of stone out of your flesh. And I shall give you a heart of flesh and put my spirit within you. And I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and you shall do them. Hallelujah. It's time to pray toward the land of Israel, so I want to invite you to stand up and face in that direction. For me, it is this direction, and we're going to ask the Father's blessing to be upon the land and its people and upon our gatherings today. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much, and we're so thankful for this wonderful set-apart Shabbat day where we can gather as your people and worship you as Creator and Redeemer. We're so thankful for all the blessings that we receive on Shabbat. We're so thankful for the joy that we sense in our hearts and for the great shalom and for the wonderful relationship and fellowship that we have with you and with our brothers and sisters. We're facing the land of Israel. We know that your heart is with that land. Your eyes are upon that land continually. And our heart is there as well. And so we are praying on behalf of the unbelieving Yehudim, the unbelieving Jews of the land, we are interceding that you would move mightily in the land of Israel, that you would open up blind eyes and unstop deaf ears, that you would cause the Jews, as they're reading the scriptures, to see Yeshua and to be convicted by your Ruach HaKodesh, 
and to call upon that one name by which we all must be saved, the name Yeshua, which means the salvation of Yah. We're also praying for all the citizens of the nation of Israel, and we're also praying for those who have the testimony of Yeshua, that you would empower them with a bold, worry-free witness that they might go forth in strength and power and boldly proclaim Yeshua and Teshuvah and a justification through belief that leads to true obedience to Torah. We're also praying for the nations of the world. We're so thankful that you would use this ministry in the way that you have. As we send out these videos each week, we pray that you would anoint the videos that you would inspire people to push play and watch the videos and listen to the message and be convicted in their hearts by the Ruach HaKodesh, by your breath, your wind, that they would call upon that one name by which we all must be saved, the name Yeshua. We pray for a mighty harvest of beings in every nation of the world. We're also praying for our gatherings today. You know every need of every person who's meeting in the gatherings, and we pray that you would move mightily in our midst today. Do what you can do, the supernatural. Lift the fallen, encourage the downcast, heal the sick, bless your people as we worship you, transform us as we study your word. And we pray that all that we do and all that we say today will bring great esteem to you. And we ask these things in the matchless name of your son and our master and Mashiach, Yeshua. Amen and amen. It's time to worship, and I want to take you over to Psalms 138 and share a powerful passage of Scripture with you. It says this, I give you thanks with all my heart. Before the mighty ones, I sing praises to you. I bow myself toward your set-apart Hekal and give thanks to your name for your loving commitment and for your truth. For you have made great your word your name above all on the day I called you did answer me you made me bold with strength in my being let all the sovereigns of the earth give thanks to you O Yah when they shall hear the words of your mouth and let them sing of the ways of Yah for great is the esteem of Yah though Yah is exalted he looks on the humble but the proud he perceives from a distance. Though I walk in the midst of distress, you revive me and stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand saves me. Yah does perfect for me. Oh Yah, your loving commitment is everlasting. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Hallelujah.
coming to judge the world with perfect justice. Let the oceans roar, the mountains sing for joy. Oh, clap your hands and sing a new song.
It's time for our prayer exhortation, and I want to take you over to Psalms 119, and we're going to begin with verse 169. It says this, My cry comes before you, O Yah. What kind of prayers do you pray? Do you pray with intensity? Do you pray sometimes with deep passion? Are your prayers like a cry that comes before Yah? Make me understand according to your word. You see, when you need deliverance and you have situations around about you that are troubling you, you need understanding. And so the psalmist here is saying, I need to understand what's going on in my life. Make me understand according to your word. Show me examples in your word that relate to me. Let my prayer come before you. In other words, let my prayer get your attention. Hear and answer my prayer. Deliver me according to your word. There are so many examples of deliverance throughout the word of Elohim. And so the psalmist is saying, I want to be delivered. I see all these examples of deliverance. And so deliver me according to what I have read in your word. My lips pour forth Praise. I'm going to offer up my petitions with thanksgiving, the scripture says. And so being thankful and offering up praise to our mighty Elohim, our mighty deliverer, is very important. It's a very important aspect of prayer. For you teach me your laws. In other words, in the midst of my trial, in the midst of my situation, you are teaching me your laws. You are teaching me about your precepts, about your righteous right rulings. I'm learning so much. My tongue sings of your word. In other words, I'm extolling you because of your word. I'm singing about your word. It's a wonderful thing. So much I am learning from your word, even in this trial that I'm facing. For all your commands are righteousness. In other words, when I obey your commands, then I am performing righteousness. I'm living rightly before you. Your hand is a help to me. You remember that phrase, helping hand? You wonder where that came from. It comes right out of the Bible. This is a promise that Yah will invade our situation. He'll come right down into our trial with His mighty hand, and His hand will help us his hand will undergird us. His hand will lift us. His hand will heal us. His hand will strengthen us. He will give us a helping hand. Have you ever prayed for the helping hand of Yah? Yah, I need your help. Send your helping hand upon me, upon this situation that I'm in. That's what the psalmist is saying here. Your hand is a help to me, for I have chosen your orders. In other words, there are benefits that come to me because I've chosen to live my life according to your orders, according to your way. And when I do that, then I can expect the helping hand of Yah. I have longed for your deliverance, O Yah. In other words, I'm not giving up. I'm longing for your deliverance. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to pray with persistence. I'm going to hang on until I receive answered prayer. I have longed for your deliverance, O Yah, and your Torah is my delight. When you delight in the Torah of Elohim, He delights in answering your prayers. My being lives and it praises you. Well, that sounds like what happens after your prayers are answered. My being lives and it praises you. Your right rulings help me. And so his heart is filled with 
thanksgiving and praise because his prayer was answered. Keep these marvelous, beautiful, powerful principles in mind today as you pray. And y'all bless you as you pray. If you have any questions, prayer requests, or need to speak with us, email us at info at triumphandtruth.global. We can also be reached by mail at Triumph and Truth, P.O. Box 470-602, 
Fort Worth, Texas 76147. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our Triumph and Truth YouTube channel and podcast on iTunes. Help us get the word out by sharing our videos and leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Also, make sure to turn on notifications so you are alerted when we post something new. If you haven't already, download our phone app. Our app is loaded with messages, information on home groups, and events going on at Triumph and Truth. To download our app, search Triumph and Truth in the Google Play Store and Triumph Family in the App Store. Check out our Triumph and Truth radio, where messages, music, and more play 24-7. Join us every day for worship time and on Shabbat for our home worship video resource. You can find the times of worship and when our home worship video resource plays on Shabbat on our website at www.triumphandtruth.global slash radio. Our new Triumph and Truth biblical calendar is now available on our website at www.triumphandtruth.global slash calendar. You can also find a link to the calendar on our phone app. Our message notes are made available weekly at triumphandtruth.global slash message notes. To help us set up a meeting in your state, contact us at info at triumphandtruth.global or call 972-626-7601. Triumph and Truth is now on Rumble, Parlor, and Gab. Head on over and subscribe or follow us and don't forget to turn on notifications so you are alerted when we post our powerful new content. Triumph and Truth is now on the Torah Network. Head on over and like our page. Check out our worldwide prayer board on our website. You can view, comment, and pray for the needs listed and leave a prayer request as well. It's time for our giving exhortation. And when I was thinking about a verse I could share with you today, I thought of John 3, 16. It says this, For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only brought forth son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but possess everlasting life or possess life in the rain to come. And so we see the motive of the heart of Elohim when he gave. He gave because he so loved the world. He so loved the people of the world that he gave his only brought forth son so that when they believe upon him, they'd not perish, but have everlasting life. We have another passage that says that Yah is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so it was because of his love that he gave. His love motivated him to give his only brought forth son because he didn't want the people to perish, but to have everlasting Life. When I think about you precious people who support this ministry, I realize that you support this ministry because you love Elohim and because you love people. You have the love of Elohim in your heart, and that's the reason why you give. You don't give because you've been persuaded in one manner or another to give. You give because you love. You want to please the Father. You want to see His work accomplished. You want to see His reign expanded. But you also love people and you want the same life transforming message that came into your life and brought revelation that brought salvation and justification to you. You want that same message to go out to as many people as possible. And so you have given and you continue to give because of your love for Yah and for people. And I want to praise Yah for your obedience. Because of your love and your obedience, you are helping to make it possible for this message, this good news message of Yeshua and Teshuvah and Yeshua's lifestyle of Torah and empowerment that comes when we believe upon Yeshua to receive the I want to obey heart and the power to be obedient. You want that message to go to as many people as possible. And we are doing the work of Yeshua. We are traveling from city to city and from state to state, 
and we are proclaiming this powerful message and people are believing in Yeshua. They are receiving the circumcision of Messiah through water immersion and they are being empowered to obedience and you are helping to make that happen because of your love for Elohim and your love for people. And I realize that there are others of you who also have love. You just haven't acted upon it yet. And so I want to encourage you, when Yah places it upon your heart, it's as if He's putting His own love in you. He wants you to act on that love. And He so loved that He gave. And it's an expression of our love when we give. We love Elohim. We want to be obedient to Him and please Him. But we also care about other people. We are growing beyond our own self-concern. And we're concerned about others around about us. That's when life gets really rich, when we care about the needs of others and we act to bring a blessing to other people. And so Yah so loved the world that He gave. He gave His only brought forth Son that whomever would believe upon Him would not perish, but have everlasting life or life in the rain to come. And that's why we give as well. We so love Elohim. We so love people. We're concerned about people who have not received this message. And we give to give them an opportunity to believe and to submit to water immersion and be empowered by receiving the I want to obey heart and the spirit of Yah, that's the power to be obedient. And then they also can go out and impact the world they live in as well. And so I just, again, want to praise Abba, for your obedience and again acknowledge that the reason we give is not because we've been persuaded in some manner. The reason we give is because we love. Yah bless you as you give. Well, are you ready to get into Yah's Word today? I am as well. I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to Deuteronomy chapter 18. We're going to begin with verse 18 in just a moment. And I've entitled this message today, What Did Yeshua Teach About the Creator? Did Yeshua teach that His Father, Yah Elohim, created the heavens and the earth and all that's within them all by Himself? Or did Yeshua teach that He was the co-creator with the Father? Or did Yeshua teach that Elohim the Father and Elohim the Son and Elohim, the Spirit, three in one, created all things. It's important that we understand what Yeshua taught because we're charged in the Torah to Shema, the words of the prophet like Moshe. Shema is a Hebrew word that means to hear and obey. And we see in Deuteronomy chapter 18, beginning with verse 18, that Yah said he's going to raise up a prophet like Moshe. And he's going to place his words in his mouth. And anyone who will not listen and obey the words of that prophet, Yah says, I'm going to judge that person. Verse 18, I shall raise up for them a prophet like you. This is Yah speaking to Moshe. Out of the midst of their brothers. And I shall put my words in his mouth. The words that came out of my mouth, Yah says, I'm going to put in his mouth. The words of the Torah I'm going to put in his mouth. The words that I reveal to the prophets I'm going to put in his mouth. The words of the writings I'm going to put in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be the man who does not listen or shema, hear and obey, to my words which he speaks in my name, I require it of him. I'm going to judge that person who will not listen to this prophet like Moshe, who is speaking my words. That's why it's so important to hear and learn from and obey the words of Yeshua. Now, we know this prophet like Moshe is Yeshua because it says so over in Acts chapter 3. So let's go over to Acts chapter 3. And we'll begin with verse 19. It says this, Repent therefore and turn back for the blotting out of your sins in order that times of refreshing might come from the presence 
of the master and that he sends Yeshua Messiah, Messiah means the anointed one, the anointed human being, pre-appointed for you. He was pre-appointed in the plan of Yah, whom heaven needs to receive until the times of restoration of all matters of which Elohim spoke through the mouth of all his set-apart prophets since of old. For Moshe truly said to the fathers, Yah, your Elohim, shall raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. Him you shall hear according to all matters, whatever he says to you. And so this says to me that Yeshua's words are the final words concerning every matter. If you have a desire to form a view on a certain subject or some matter, you go to Yeshua. You study what Yeshua taught. You form your opinion, your view, based off of what Yeshua taught. And then you make all of the other writers of Scripture comply with Yeshua's words. Verse 23, And it shall be that every being who does not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. And so we're going to be judged based on whether we followed Yeshua. Yeshua said, follow me. Whether we listened to his words and learned from him. And obeyed what he said. We're going to be judged if we refuse to listen to Yeshua. And so on all of these matters, today we're talking about did Yeshua teach that the Creator is his Father, his Father alone, or whether Yeshua is a co-creator, or whether there's three in one. What did Yeshua teach about the Creator? We're to hear him and obey him. All right, let's go over to 1 Timothy chapter 6, and we'll pick up with verse 3, and this is Shaul writing. This is the standard that Shaul set of judgment for all teachers. If anyone teaches differently and does not agree to the sound words, those of our Master Yeshua Messiah, the anointed human being, and to the teaching which is according to reverence. He is puffed up. He's proud and arrogant. Understanding none at all. He doesn't understand anything. But is sick about questionings and verbal battles. From which come envy, strife, slander, wicked suspicions. Worthless disputes of men of corrupt minds. And deprived of the truth. In other words, these men only want to argue. And they are men of corrupt minds, deprived of the truth, who think that reverence is a means of gain. To them, it's all about the money. Withdraw from such. And so here's the standard. If any teacher teaches something differently and does not agree to the sound words, those of our Master, Yeshua, Messiah. All sound doctrine is rooted in Messiah's words. If a teacher teaches something that disagrees with Yeshua's teachings, then you are to withdraw from that teacher. And so with these things in mind, let's go into the Good News accounts and study out what Yeshua taught about the Creator and then we'll go into the Torah and we'll see if the Torah is in agreement with Yeshua. I can tell you in advance it will be. We'll look at the prophets. We'll look at the writings. And then we'll go into the second writings. So let's go over to Matthew chapter 19. And we'll begin with verse 3. It says this. And the Pharisees came to him, came to Yeshua, trying him. And saying to him, is it right for a man to put away his wife for every reason or for any reason? And he answering said to them, did you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male 
and female. So this is a reference to Yah Elohim, his father, and he uses the singular personal pronoun he. He doesn't say we or they or them. He says he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this cause a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. And so we see that he's talking about his father. His father is the creator. Now let's go on a little further. Mark chapter 10. Starting with verse 2. It says this, And the Pharisees came and asked him, Is it right for a man to put away his wife? Trying him. And he answering said to them, What did Moshe command you? And they said, Moshe allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to put her away. And Yeshua said to them, Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this command. However, from the beginning of the creation, Elohim, speaking of his father, made them male and female. So again, he is referring to his father, Elohim, and he's speaking of Yah Elohim as the sole creator. He has not included himself in that. He's not said, I'm a co-creator. He said nothing about three in one. He's talking about his father Elohim as the creator. And then let's look at Mark chapter 13, beginning with verse 19. It says, For in those days there shall be distress such as has not been from the beginning of creation which Elohim created until this time, nor ever shall be. Again, this is another reference to Yeshua's father, Yah Elohim, who created the physical creation, the physical universe. Again, there is absolutely no mention of Yeshua being a co-creator or of some sort of three-in-one situation of creation. No, it's speaking of Elohim, his father. All right, let's go over to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 43. It says this, You heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those cursing you, do good to those hating you, and pray for those insulting you and persecuting you, so that you become sons of your Father in the heavens, because He makes His Son... Notice it's his son, the S-U-N son, the sun in the sky, rise on the wicked and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. So notice that the son has been created by the father, Elohim. It's his son that he created. And he sends rain, and that rain is part of his creation. And so Yeshua is again pointing to his Father and pointing out the fact that the Father alone is the Creator. And then let's look at Matthew chapter 6, and we'll begin with verse 26. It says, Look at the birds of the heaven, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into storehouses, yet your heavenly Father does feed them, are you not worth more than they? And which of you by worrying is able to add one cubic to his lifespan? 
So why do you worry about clothing? Note well the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And I say to you that even Shelemo, or Solomon, in all his esteem was not dressed like one of these. But if Elohim, speaking of his father, so clothes the grass of the field, which exists today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more you, O oh you, of little belief. Notice it is Elohim who clothes the grass of the field. Another reference to the fact that Yeshua's father, Yah Elohim, is the creator all by himself. All right. Now, let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're going to enter into the Torah. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And let's read verse 4. This is the Shema. It says, Hear, O Israel, Yah, our Elohim, Yah is one. Now, Yeshua quoted this when he was asked, What is the greatest command of all? He quoted the Shema. Hear, O Israel, Yah, our Elohim, Yah is one. And so when you see Yah and Elohim in the scriptures, why would you perform some mental gymnastics and try to say that it's something other than what the scripture actually says? Yah, our Elohim, Yah is one. He is Elohim all by himself. Yeshua taught in John 17, 3, that he is the only true Elohim. So I wanted to lay that foundation as we get into the Torah here. Let's go over to Genesis chapter 1. And we'll begin with verse 1. It says, In the beginning, Elohim, remember Elohim is one. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, and the earth came to be formless and empty, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim, now Elohim is spirit, so this is just an extension of the Father. And the spirit of Elohim, or the breath of Elohim, was moving on the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let light come to be, and light came to be. And so we see the Father, we see Elohim creating by speaking forth His word. All right, let's um, continue on by looking at verse 6. And Elohim said, Let an expanse come to be in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the expanse and separated the waters which were under the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse, and it came to be so, again, Elohim, all by himself, is creating the physical world, the universe. And then we continue on to verse 9. And Elohim said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it came to be so. Verse 11. And Elohim said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the plant that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it came to be so. So we're not seeing here anywhere any mention of some co-creator. We're not seeing anywhere anything that says that there's three in one. We're seeing that Yah... Our Elohim, the Father of Yeshua, is creating by speaking forth His Word. Now let's look at verse 14. 
It says, And Elohim said, Let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it came to be so. And Elohim made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And Elohim set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. Verse 20. And Elohim said, Let the waters teem with shoals of living beings, and let birds fly above the earth on the face of the expanse of the heavens. And Elohim created great sea creatures, and every living being that moves, with which the waters teemed according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. Again, this is Yeshua's father, Yah Elohim, who is creating the heavens and the earth and the animals and the fish and all that's within the heavens and the earth, all by himself. All right, let's look at verse 24. And Elohim said, Let the earth bring forth the living being according to its kind, livestock and creeping creatures and beasts of the earth according to its kind, and it came to be so. Look at verse 26. And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over all the creeping creatures that creep on the ground. Now somebody might say, well, look at there. It says here, let us make man in our image. And they want to say, well, this is, you know, Yeshua and the Father together, possibly creating or three in one. And yet, let us make man in our image could simply be that Elohim is speaking to the heavenly council. Because we see in the very next verse, and Elohim created the man. Who created the man? Elohim. And Elohim created the man in his image, not in their image or their images. In the image of Elohim, he created him, male and female, he created them. Now let's look at verse 31. And Elohim saw all that he had made, and see, it was very good. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the sixth day. Now let's look at Genesis 2, starting with verse 2. And in the seventh day, Elohim completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Again, these are singular personal pronouns. He, not we, not them. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and set it apart because on it he rested from all his work which Elohim in creating had made. These are the births of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that Yah Elohim made earth and heavens. Again, here we see the personal name of Yah. It's a short and poetic name that I'm using, Yah. But it's a yod He wah -Hey. And Yah Elohim made the earth and the heavens. No mention of a co-creator. No mention of three in one. All right. Let's look at 
Genesis chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, And out of the ground Yah Elohim made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, with the tree of life in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then let's look at verse 18. It says, And Yah Elohim said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I am going to make a helper for him as his counterpart. And from the ground, Yah Elohim formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living being, that was its name. And then verse 22. And the rib which Yah Elohim had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Again, a single person, the father of Yeshua, Yah Elohim. As the Shema says, Yah or Elohim, Yah is one. Chapter th now let's look at Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, The Nahash was more crafty than all the lives of the field, which Yah Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, Is it true? Well, it just goes on to tell that story. But the point here to make is that, that it was Yah Elohim who made all the lives of the field. And then Genesis chapter 6 and verse 7. It says, And Yah said, I am going to wipe off man whom I have created from the face of the ground, both man and beast, creeping creature and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. Notice how many times it says I. I am going to wipe off man whom I have created from the face of the ground. For I am sorry that I have made them. Yah are Elohim. Yah is one. All right. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 20. And let's look at verse 11. It says, For in six days Yah made the heavens and the earth. Who made the heavens and the earth? Yah. For in six days Yah made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yah blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. And then let's look at Exodus chapter 31 and verse 17. It says, Between me and the children of Israel, it is a sign forever. For in six days Yah made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Again, Yah our Elohim, Yah is one. All right, now let's go to the prophets because we just read all those verses in the Torah and they all agree with what Yeshua taught. That the Creator is Yeshua's Father, Yah Elohim. Now let's see if the prophets agree with that. We'll go over to Isaiah 44 and verse 24. It says this, Thus said Yah, your Redeemer, and He who formed you from the womb. I am Yah, doing all, stretching out the heavens all alone, spreading out the earth with none beside me. So this is a passage that declares that Yah created the heavens and the earth all by Himself, and there was None with him, none beside him. Very important passage. Now let's go to Isaiah 40. Starting with verse 10. 
It says, see the master Yah comes with strength and his arm rules for him. See his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And then verse 22. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. And then look at verse 28. Did you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting Elohim, Yah, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, his understanding is unsearchable. And so we're seeing the prophet Yeshayahu in complete agreement with what Yeshua taught about the creator. Now let's look at Isaiah 42 and verse 5. It says, Thus said the Ael Yah, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. Again, this is directed to the Ael, Yah. Yah is one. And he's the creator. Let's look at Isaiah 43, 1. It says, But now, thus said Yah, your creator, O Yaakov, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Let's continue on. Isaiah 45, starting with verse 11. It says this, Thus said Yah, the set-apart one of Israel, and his maker, in other words, Israel's maker, Do you ask me about my sons, what is to come, and about the work of my hands? Do you command me? And then look at verse 12. I have made the earth and created man on it. I, my hands, have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts I have commanded. And then verse 18. For thus said Yah, creator of the heavens, he is Elohim former of earth and its maker. He established it. He did not create it to be empty. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Yah, and there is none else. I am Yah, and there is none else. I am the creator, and there is none else. After watching this video, you may have been convicted in your heart and you're asking yourself the question, what must I do to be saved? Well, the Bible tells us that there are some things that we must do to be saved. And so I want to give you seven things, according to Scripture, that we must be willing to do to walk the path to salvation. The first thing is we must believe with all of our hearts that Yeshua Messiah is the son of the living Elohim, that he died on the tree for our sins, that he was buried and raised from the dead. And then we must perform teshuvah. The word teshuvah is a Hebrew word that means to turn to the master in obedience. It's not just enough to say, I'm sorry for what I did in the past. I'm sorry for my sins. But instead you leave behind your lifestyle of sin and you embrace the word of Yah, and you have a willingness and a desire then to be obedient to the commandments. And then thirdly, 
you must submit yourself to water immersion. When you're immersed in water, the Bible says that you are buried with Yeshua Messiah and you are raised to walk in newness of life. The scripture says that old lifestyle of sin is cut away from your life. And it's the place where the circumcision of Messiah takes place. That's the circumcision of the heart. And you receive the want to heart. In other words, you want to obey. And then that leads us to number four. You also receive the power to be obedient. And how do you do that? You pray to be filled with the set apart spirit of Yah. And so when you're filled with the Spirit of Yah, or you're immersed in the Spirit of Yah, not only are you given the power to be successful within the context of the covenant and to love Yah the way Yah wants to be loved through obedience, but you're also empowered. You're given gifts of the Spirit. You're empowered by Yah to be useful for the reign of Elohim and to go out and to receive that harvest of humanity that Yeshua has charged all of his followers to go out and receive. And then we need to read our Bibles regularly and pray continually. The scripture says the word of Yah is like milk for a baby. And so if you're just coming to belief, it's like you're a little infant in your belief and you need to grow. How are you gonna grow? You need to eat. And what do you eat? You eat the Word. It's like milk for a baby. So eat regularly in the Word and pray continually, the Scripture says. Isn't it wonderful that you have a relationship with the Father and now you can have an ongoing conversation with the Father? That's a beautiful thing. And then number six, you need to find a local fellowship that you can engage with. If you can't find a local fellowship, then get connected with a ministry that's blessing you, and then stay connected. And then number seven, the scripture says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. What that tells us is that salvation is not just a moment, it's not just a prayer, but instead it's a life. And so you have to live this life of walking in the will of the Father, walking in his ways, following after Yeshua and his example of obedience, loving the word, obeying the commandments, praying, and being filled with the Spirit of Yah, being led by the Spirit of Yah. And if you'll do that throughout your life, the scripture says when you get to the end of your life, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, once you start, don't quit, don't give out, don't give in, don't back up, continue in this walk. And if you'll do it and not stop, then at the end of your life or when Yeshua returns, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, if you are ready to make a commitment to these things, then why don't you send us an email at info at triumphandtruth.global and we're going to respond right back to you and we're going to celebrate with you the fact that you have believed upon Yeshua and you're ready to walk in Yeshua's example of obedience, walk in a lifestyle that pleases the Master, and we want to encourage you in it. And so send us an email. We want to celebrate with you. If you endure to the end, the scripture says, you will be saved. Hallelujah. It's always such a joy to be able to come through these cameras each week and provide this home worship video resource to you. It's my prayer that you have been tremendously blessed. And I want to leave you with a spoken blessing over your life. So why don't you stand up where you are, just lift up your hands and begin to worship as I speak these words of blessing over you. Yah bless you and guard you. Yah make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Yah lift up his face upon you and give you shalom. In the matchless name of Yeshua, amen and amen.